Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us for the uh, virtual artist talk here that's going to kick off uh, the brand new art exhibition at the KMEEK Art Center. It's called Introspections and Expressions and features the fantastic artwork of Sue Daniel and Paula DeMarco. Oop. Sorry a moment. Uh, my computer is... Uh, there we go. Sorry, a uh, little technical difficulties there, everyone. Uh, and we're back. Um, yeah, so it's a brand new art exhibition up at the K-Meek uh, featuring these two fantastic artists. And we're getting a chance to hear from both of them uh, as they discuss their techniques, their inspirations, their bodies of work, tell you a bit about them, and we'll get to see some samples of their artwork. Uh, it's going to be fantastic, and it will definitely make you want to go and check out the exhibit. Uh, my name is Stephen Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council. And we're so thrilled to work with the KMEEK Arts Centre to present exhibitions uh, like this in their space. Uh, this exhibition is on both uh, floors where they have theatre, so on the Grosvenor Theatre and the McEwen Theatre lobbies. You can check out these fantastic uh, works of art. And the KMEEK is located in what is uh, also known as West Vancouver, on the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, the Squamish Nation, the tsleil Nation, and the Musqueam Nation. And we are so grateful uh, to our host nations for their stewardship of these lands since time immemorial. And we are honored to be able to share these lands and gather for arts and culture activities. And for everyone watching, if you have questions or comments for Sue and Paula, you can drop those in the chat. Uh, we will get to those throughout uh, the evening. So introspections uh, and expressions on at the KMEEK Art Center uh, opening today. Uh, it's on until October the 23rd. Uh, you can go and check it out during the week. Uh, hours uh, are 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Or if you are uh, at a show, please uh, stop. Uh, at intermission and beforehand and, and take a stroll and, and look at all of the artwork. I'm sure you will be incredibly uh, inspired. So this exhibition, as we said, features Sue Daniel and Paula DeMarco, both uh, incredibly talented artists uh, working uh, in very different mediums, but both uh, using art uh, to pull what's on the outside, uh, what's on the inside out, uh, and, and it's artwork full of emotion uh, and expression. And so we're going to take a few minutes uh, so that you can meet both of our artists. Uh, they will uh, introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their background and their work. Uh, let's start with Paula. Paula DeMarco, could you please uh, introduce yourself to everyone? Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Paula DeMarco. Um, I'm based in Vancouver, BC. I was actually born in the US, raised in Argentina, and for the last eight years, Vancouver has been my home. I was your typical kid that you could find drawing all day, every day, and being very artistic. But then I chose a career that took me on a very different path, and I ended up in the corporate world. And I was in complete denial of being an artist and my artistic skills, so I just put it on hold for 14 years. Until I moved to Vancouver, there was something about this city that allowed me to reconnect with my passion. And then during those fa uh, first five years living in Vancouver, I did my own version of art school, exploring different types of media and subjects until I landed on watercolors and specifically on portraits. And I wanted to explore the complexity of people and emotions in a very surrealistic style. I knew that watercolors would give me the freedom to bring to life all the ideas I had in my head. And today I still work as a business analyst, but outside of office hours, you can find me exploring my art practice and pursuing other creative endeavors. So that's me in a nutshell. Thanks so much for sharing that, Paula. That was a great little sneak peek. Uh, Sue, would you please introduce yourself to everyone? Oh, so, so oh Sue, uh, you need to uh, unmute yourself. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Not used to these gadgets. I'm Sue Daniel, and I'm very excited to be here. Um, I've had a 
very interesting and varied life, a long one. Um, I've had careers in a variety of areas, teaching, business, real estate. Um, I've traveled extensively. I've lived in Turkey, England, the US, and in Hungary, where I was born and left as a child during the Hungarian Revolution. So there's quite a background behind all that. It's sort of part of who I am and what drives my art, uh, what drives me. Um, I started painting seriously really just a few years ago. Prior to that, I was uh, in business and uh, pretty busy. The art has always been in the background, but not in the foreground because time didn't allow that. And when I decided to retire and decided that now time was available, I took it quite seriously and I guess jumped in with both feet and made it again a, a career, a full time career. So I paint every day. I have a purpose built studio that is um, my space. I go down there in the morning and come up at the end of the day and I do paint a lot. Um, it's part of the sort of habit of um, feeling that it is it is a, it, not a job, but it, it is a career that I'm passionate about and want to do every day. It's not something that I have to do. It's something that I desperately want to do. Um, from the beginning, uh, I've approached art as not, you know, something I dabble in. Uh, for me, it's a serious practice um, as a serious profession. Um, that is part of the reason I paint daily and um, treat it as a professional business. And I conduct myself that way. I am constantly working toward perfecting my style. Um, I want to improve my technique. I want to create a visual vocabulary that speaks to a specific type of picture, but never a predetermined picture. Um, I want that creative, spontaneous flow to just happen as part of the process. I may start with an idea, but it rarely ends up where I thought I might go because inevitably the creative elements um, take you on tangents that are not predictable. So that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> awesome, thank you for sharing, Sue. That was, uh, it's great to uh, hear both of you about your, your approaches and, and your background and how, uh, how art has come to you at, uh, in different ways in different times uh, in your life. Because uh, it's great that you're able to actually pursue that passion now. Uh, because not all of us get the, get the chance to do that. So kudos to you. Thank you. So uh, now to give you all uh, a little sneak peek of the exhibition, we're going to take uh, a tour uh, so you can see all the artwork um, up. Um, this video is not going to do uh, these stunning paintings uh, justice. Um, but hopefully it will uh, get your appetites whetted and you will uh, be able to come on in and uh, check it out. So we're just going to pull that up right now. So uh, when you come in uh, on the uh, Grosvenor uh, Theater lobby, uh, this is the sort of the view you'll see in the atrium. Uh, we start with uh, some of Paula's uh, fantastic surreal portraiture here. We've got uh, biographies and statements from the artists so you can learn a little bit about them uh, as you as you watch uh, and take in their artwork. Okay. I know we're gonna talk a little bit further into um, each artist's specific sort of um, process and series on their bodies of work. Um, but I do have to say, uh, these pieces are very engaging, uh, Paula. These, these faces um, really tell a story and people really, uh, when we were 
displaying the show, staff at the K Meekin and the Arts Council's own staff were, were all figuring out who, who these were and, and what they were saying and how the elements surrounding them were expressing the feelings. Uh, it was, they're, they're great conversation pieces. It really starts a dialogue. Thank you. It's really great to see them all together. They look really great. And we've we've split the display spaces in half. So then we get to move on to some of Sue's artwork, which again is is bold and dramatic and, and starts a lot of great conversations and dialogue. I think the first few pieces are from um, your introspection series. It was one of the some of the fun things uh, we were discovering. Uh, while we were installing the show was all of the all of the various marks and shapes and colors and textures that are layered and hidden uh, hidden throughout your pieces, Sue. There's a there's a lot to discover. And there was this very impressive uh, piece, this, this very, very large uh, painting, uh, which is uh, almost floor to, to ceiling. Uh, it's pretty great to, to come into the space and, and, and almost walk into the world that it creates. There's, there's uh, one more piece uh, on this floor. We, we tried to fill up as much wall space as we could with all of your, all of your artworks. And from there, uh, the exhibit continues uh, downstairs into the lobby of the McEwen uh, Theater. And we have uh, more of Sue's work um, on, the, uh, on her introspection series. It's, uh, it's been interesting um, doing these exhibitions uh, in this space because we get to pair um, artists together and uh, finding uh, the similarities and, and differences between uh, how the two of you um, express these deep emotional uh, wells with, within you um, it was, it was pretty interesting. It was pretty, pretty cool to see how, how two people uh, are able to do that and, and pull from themselves and create these very expressive works. And how you'll see, uh, it's interesting how there are, you'll even see some similar um, kind of gestures and, and shapes happening um, between each, each artist's body of work that I think is, is pretty interesting. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of drama and a lot of shapes that sort of cascade and, and jump out uh, from the from the pieces, it's it was pretty cool to see those those similarities pop up. And just giving everyone a little taste of all the textures and, and mark making you can see there. And then we move on to uh, some more of Paula's uh, elegant work. I have to say, um, 
because a lot of the submissions and things come in um, digitally, uh, I didn't notice, uh, you know, you don't get to see things on all of the pieces. Like mm -hmm. for instance, the previous piece, um, the hair is kind of silvery and shiny. And that's not something that you don't see until you, you get up close and, and find all these great little hidden details and things, little pleasant surprises. Yeah, and there's, uh, there's a lot of different mediums happening too. I know each of you, uh, you know, you'll primarily work in, uh, for instance, Sioux oil and uh, Paula watercolor, but you use other elements too. And it's, it's, a, it's a really wonderful merger that you're able to create with your pieces. Everything seems to, to fit in the same world, even though you might be using different mediums. So that's, uh, that's the exhibit. Uh, that's what you'll see when you come in. Um, but obviously, uh, you'll get to spend much more time with the artwork and really take in uh, these powerful statements that Sue and Paula are making and really feel uh, those intense emotions that they're trying to express. Uh, it's, it's, it's a stunning exhibit. It's it makes me happy, it makes me excited, um, and it, it brings up a lot of difficult emotions too, uh, which is also pretty wonderful that, uh, to experience such a, a broad array of, of emotions and reactions when looking at, uh, at some artwork. So thank you, both of you, for creating such interesting work. And uh, just a reminder, uh, anyone watching, if you have uh, any questions or comments, uh, drop them in the chat and we'll get to them. So now uh, we are going to hear from our artists again. Uh, we're gonna look at, uh, each one has selected uh, a work that's on display and we're gonna talk a little bit more about it in depth, uh, just to sort of give you uh, a bit more behind the scenes uh, and insight into their, their process and uh, the artwork that's on display and uh, kind of what they're, what they're trying to say and what you can, uh, what you can expect. Uh, so let's let's start uh, this time with Sue. I'll pull up uh, your fantastic uh, artwork, and then you can tell us uh, tell us all about it. Okay. I aspire to create art that is not anything recognizable, as you can see by this piece. Uh, it's not contrived, not anything describable. It's an abstract construction uh, that just makes you feel. Hopefully it reaches out and touches you in some way. I draw, draw my inspiration from observing my own feelings and reactions to nature, to music, which is a huge inspiration for me, and to the situations that occur in life. Art for me is a way of capturing the essence of my feelings and inspirations through fluid shapes, translucent, bold colors, and gestural elements, which create a visual vocabulary. Introspection, this piece is one of five of the introspection series. Uh, they're all three feet by four feet high. Um, they're all layered with acrylic underpainting, some acrylic inks, overpainted in oils, sometimes thinned, sometimes thick, varied uh, markings, and so on. This one, the theme overall is introspection of all the five pieces, and it is really um, a journey of, it's a story of how uh, one responds to tragedy. Uh, in my case, I had quite a tragic year um, finding out that someone very close to me was uh, diagnosed with cancer. So these pieces were a way of, I guess, channeling that emotion into something that I could deal with and express. This one um, happened to be um, 
one that really says a lot. It is called Fear and Courage Battle. The various pieces each have a story, but this one, which is the fourth in the series, is the sort of really pivotal part of the journey. Uh, this piece captures the most powerful emotions, the struggle, the fear, the strength that you find you have because you have no option, and the courage um, to move forward. All these emotions are part of our very human response when life, as we know, it takes a, an unexpected detour because we have no option but to deal with it. So that's that piece. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, sharing that, Sue. Uh, you can definitely see uh, that battle happening uh, in this piece uh, with all of the combating and contrasting colors and, and shapes. Uh, I truly appreciate you sharing um, such a personal uh, bit about, your, about the inspiration behind, uh, behind the artwork, because that's uh, what artwork is kind of in general, but I think especially the artwork um, that's on display in this exhibit is, it is that, that inner story and, and how do you get that out? How do you express that? Uh, so now we are going to uh, see up close and uh, hear a little bit uh, from Paula on, on one of her fantastic artworks. Yeah, uh, well, this one is a, a breath of air. I feel a little bit bad to continue on the tragic note that Sue started, but it also has a very sad story behind. So. <laughs> If the audience was looking for something uplifting, this is not it, just a heads up. Um, but yeah, this is the last piece of the body of work that is at the exhibit, at least for now. I might add some more in the future, but I thought that this piece in particular was relevant given the time of the year, and I'll get back to that in a second. But I don't know if you noticed, but this is actually a self-portrait and I wanted to capture how grief has felt to me over the last year. Um, I lost my partner more than a year ago to suicide and it's been very hard. I, at choke years, I've been drowning in the waters of grief and I have many days that I feel like this invisible hand is just keeping my head underwater and then gasping for air. But something that surprised me also about grief is that it gives you breaks. And whenever I have a break, I come to the surface for a breath of air. And something very interesting happens then. I feel that when, when that heaviness is lifted from you for whatever period of time, sometimes it's just a few hours, a day, a week. Sometimes I get a really good couple of months. Uh, you can help to feel this immense gratitude. And it's this gratitude for feeling something else other than sadness, right? For gratitude for being able to see the beauty around you again, for feeling like the warm sun in your skin and the fr freshness of a deep in the ocean and just for just being alive. And, and I feel there's a lot of beauty in sadness if you allow yourself to connect with it. And, and I say that this piece is relevant for this time of the year because on September 10th, it was World Suicide Prevention Day. So yeah, it's been on my mind a lot. So that's why I wanted to speak to this piece today. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Paula. That's, I'm so sorry. Um, and thank you, that was, that's very important to share this, to share this story with everyone uh, watching, I think. I think that's going to make a lot of people uh, stop and think. And uh, this piece is absolutely stunning. Um, this wasn't one of the ones in your submission, so when it, it came in, uh, it really, it really blew, it really blew me away. Uh, just the composition and the colors, and that you can see the the breath coming out of the lips. You know, just the way the mouth is open. It's it's there. It's it's, it's asking for it. It's taking it in. So thank you so much for sharing uh, about this artwork. Um, 
it seems both of you uh, use your work as a way of uh, working through uh, emotions, whether it be uh, despair or, <clears throat> or worry or joy or trauma, combat, something. Um, why is it um, that you find uh, art making um, and particularly uh, art making that can be on display for other people to see uh, that that helps you uh, as a tool? Why, why, why is making art uh, an important part of your uh, emotional life? It's, um, can I answer that? Please. Okay. Um, so often I find that we tend to bottle up emotions and not be very expressive uh, and open about them because often it's not comfortable or it's, you're not in a situation where you can share things easily with other people. Um, through art, for me, it's releasing it, letting it out there, and the emotion of whatever is inside, somehow as it's transformed onto a canvas, you kind of let it go. It, it's not that it's no longer there, but somehow the, the, the pressure of it or the emotional stress of it is released and you can kind of look at it and see it almost as a viewer rather than um, a, a, a subject, you know, you're, you're not the object of the pain, you're, you're, you're the viewer of it. And somehow that disconnection I find very therapeutic. Can I add to that? Yes. Yeah, I'm totally in agreement with that. I feel that art is a language, right? And some of these emotions are really hard to express. And I also find a lot of freedom when creating art, right? Freedom sometimes from your own circumstances and the things that life throws at you. And also the possibility to transform your pain into something very beautiful. Because all of my pieces, even though they might they explore different emotions and they're not all happy emotions, but there's still beauty in all of them. And I find a lot of comfort in being able to transmute heavy emotions into something very beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you both very much. That's, that's what art does. Uh, mm -hmm. And you both have this, uh, this goal to make the, uh, the intangible tangible, uh, you know, to make it, to make it real, to make it something seen, something people feel they could, they could touch. Uh, and I think that's, I think that connects with, with viewers. And you both um, talk about uh, and use, uh, a various visual uh, a vocabulary uh, and language. I know for Sue, you make these, these uh, there's, there's these repeated shapes and, and, and colors that appear in your work. And, and for Paula, uh, you take these elemental um, and nature uh, kind of images to incorporate around uh, these, these faces. Uh, how, how is it that you sort of have developed um, each of you these sort of these visual uh, languages um, over time? Um, and where do you see uh, that going in the future? Um, for me, um, I like the abstraction of my work because I don't want it to be definable or describable or um, recognizable as a, as a, a figure or anything figurative. Uh, but at the same time, I love the details of the markings of the, it, it's sort of the contrast. One is loose, um, almost flowing and totally unbound. And the other is very controlled, thought through, um, distinctive uh, markings that almost contradict the free freedom and the flow of the abstraction. And I like that conflict because I'm by nature quite detailed. And for me to be loose takes effort. It's much easier to be detailed. So it's, it's sort of a dance back and forth between wanting to be free and loose and expressive. But at the same time, I like that control element that the shapes the detail, the gestural movements add 
and create this wonderful conflict uh, within the piece. Very cool. Conflict, conflict breeds creativity. <laughs> uh, how, how about you, Paula? For me, well, I also like to play a little bit between having a lot of detail and not that much definition. That's why I like to blur and blend some details. Because even though I do more figurative work, I still like, feel like the freedom that you have in the creative space, right? That things don't have to be as they are. And you can play with it and just make anything you want out of it and make it more like your dreams look, right? In a very surrealistic style. And, and I think for me in the future, I'm gonna keep working in that space. I'm always more like in the realism kind of style, but more surrealistic. But I think I'm ready in the next year to start telling a, bit, a little bit my story of trauma. So I'm gonna try to bring to images a lot of the things that, are that I've been experiencing even in a more uh, tangible way. I think that last piece that I just shared was just the bridge between this last body of work and the new one. Awesome. Can't wait to, uh, to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you both uh, seem to work in, in, in series uh, of, of certain sort of themes. Uh, is that more kind of because that's uh, that's what you're you're going through at the time. So that's that's how you're able to express yourself is to think uh, the artwork I'm going to create at this time is going to cover this, or is it a bit more of a, an organic kind of process? And so when when you're done with kind of a theme or a series, it's okay. Well, now I can move on to the next. You know, I don't think I have a simple answer for that because it's not necessarily um, sort of planned. Uh, some things seem to take a series to actualize the thought you're trying to share. They can't be communicated on one canvas. And for me, because my canvases are quite large, I have a lot of room to communicate <laughs> through. But um, because sometimes that's just not enough space. Um, and so a series kind of is a way to get around that. Um, once in a while, actually quite often, I'll do one big piece. And when it's done, it feels like I've captured its soul and anything more would detract from it. So it's done and it says it's done. And then you got to leave it alone. A series then would not do it justice. So each situation is for me quite unique. Um, and the process very specific to that piece or that series. And um, I'm not able to actually just keep painting. Some, sometimes I see great works and, you know, you can see 40. I don't know that I could be capable of painting a series with 40 in mind. Um, at some point, I think the piece says, I'm done after this. I think you destroy its soul. So for me, they vary. Um, for me, it's more, let's say similar, more of an organic process. I think a series is good because it allows you to tell a story and also have enough like time and space to see your work evolve, right? If you just do one piece and you stop there, you don't know how it would have had evolved or how it would look or how it would grow if you done three, four, five more pieces, right? But I also get to a point where I feel I'm done, right? Like I'm, I feel good with it. I'm, for example, for this body of work, I might add more in the future along the same lines, but for now, I feel good. I think I created the work I wanted to create. I'm happy with it. And I'm ready to move to the next thing. Yeah, moving on to the next thing. That's uh, that seems to be a bit of a, a theme uh, in <laughs> in your artwork, both of you. It's 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 this getting this emotion out, getting these thoughts and feelings out, and and taking that next step uh, beyond it. It's, uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty wonderful feeling uh, to get to experience all of that. Uh, I guess uh, everyone's pretty quiet tonight. I guess you're answering, you're answering all the questions they thought they might have. 
um, I guess uh, a little bit on sort of technique and medium then. Uh, what is it about your sort of, I know you both use uh, multimedia, but you sort of uh, do kind of work like Sue, oil seems to be your, your dominant yeah. uh, form and Paula watercolor seems to be uh, the, the type of, of paint that you use the most. What is it about the particular media that you use uh, that helps you uh, create the pieces that you want and, and get these thoughts and ideas uh, out rather than say, if you're gonna use sculpture or if you're gonna use acrylic or something like that? Um, I really like um, using oils because the way it feels, I mean, it's almost like you wanna touch it and roll in it. it it's sensual, it's tactile it's fluid, it's vibrant, it's, it's, it, it goes on in this beautiful flowing soft texture and you can scrape it on with a palette knife, you can apply it with a brush, you can apply it thick, thinned, um, you can put layers and layers on top of each other. Some paintings must have 10 layers of oil and each layer just adds a complexity, a dimension, um, a texture, um, depth. And somehow, instead of just being flat and sitting there, it, 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 it almost vibrates toward you. And I, I don't know that I, I've ever seen any medium that I've used that does that like oil does. And sometimes I'll use acrylics to underpaint to kind of you know, a bit of graphite, acrylic to kind of get my uh, creative juices going, as it were, and start um, sort of mapping a thought or an idea or a feeling. But that's just sort of for me, because you never see it in the finished piece. Um, all of that gets covered and obliterated with the oils and then the markings and so forth. But it gets the process going. And that is all part of uh, the fun, because then you can mess it up and it doesn't matter. There's no inhibition about just letting loose because it's going to be all covered up anyway. And even if a, a piece doesn't turn out quite the way I'd hoped, oil is very forgiving. And you just, and I do a lot of wet on wet. So the oil is still wet when I can reapply other layers and change it uh, and take it somewhere else. How about you, Paula? Why why do you why do you work in in, in the medium you work in? Mm -hmm. Well, I remember when I was thinking about learning watercolors, people would tell me, "Oh, it's so hard to control and so unforgiving. You cannot make mistakes." And I surprisingly find so much freedom in watercolors. I find it gives me the flexibility to do whatever I want, and and I just love how. It allows me to create that effect of being very delicate and dreamy at the same time, it's something that I really love. And it mixes very well with other types of media. I usually do like all the first layers with watercolors and I take it to a point where I can just add those final touches with a little bit of graphite, uh, some touches of color pencil, a gouache. A, I use acrylic ink for all the metallic effects. So it really mixes well with other dry media. And yeah, I just love how it looks. I love the, the final effect that it gives to the work. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, both of you for sharing, uh, sharing these insights with us. Um, I guess one final question um, with your artwork uh, being so uh, expressive and, and so, uh, emotional. Um, what is it you hope uh, visitors uh, to the exhibit will, will take away uh, from your artwork? I think each piece has a message for each viewer um, and they'll all be different. Um, my abstract pieces, I think if you look at it and you connect, you'll take away something that's unique to how you respond to that. Um, and I, I doubt that two people would feel the same way about it. Perhaps some of the names or the titles to the pieces might uh, actually um, 
take you down a path that you wouldn't have necessarily gone down if you just looked at the piece. So that might be a sort of indicator to how you might respond to it. But generally, if you didn't look at the title first and just looked at the piece, um, it'd be very interesting to kind of interview people and say, all right, so what do you see there? And it's, it's really quite amazing. Sometimes people come into my studio and I have a fairly large studio and I'll be working on pieces and I'll have pieces on the wall and whatever. And uh, they'll walk in and say, oh, that's really nice. Oh, I see a dog or I see a cat or I see a tree. I go, what? <laughs> Where do you see that? But it's the viewer, right? The viewer extrapolates uh, and the mind fills in what isn't there. And it's kind of funny. And I've had people come in and say, oh, that's fantastic. I love it. Turn it upside down. <laughs> and then we turn it around and says, see, that's the way it should be. So abstract is wonderful because it's very fluid in its interpretation. But um, um, that that's part of the beauty of the freedom through abstract that people um, identify, interpret, and if they connect, then then they love the piece. I was gonna add to that. Uh, on top of that, I think it's an invitation for introspection to explore the emotions in the portraits and see what emotions they bring in them. And also to find beauty, right? To find beauty even in difficult emotions. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sue Daniel and Paula DeMarco for sharing with us this evening and for sharing your artwork uh, that we can go on and see at the K-Meek Art Center uh, on until October 23rd. Uh, so please, uh, if you can, make it up to West Vancouver and uh, check out this stunning exhibition. Uh, and if you would like to uh, learn a little bit more uh, about the artists, uh, there's links to their uh, websites and Instagram in the description of this video. There's also links to the KMEEK to find out all the amazing programming they have going on and to the uh, Westman Arts Council to see uh, what else we get up to. Uh, so thank you all for uh, joining us for this uh, fantastic uh, and insightful conversation. And thank you again to Sue and Paula uh, for sharing with us this evening. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Thank special. you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, take care, everyone. And uh, we'll see you uh, at the show. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.